Grizzlies fans, welcome back into a game day update post in season tournament. The Grizzlies are taking on the Dallas Mavericks for the third time this season, second time this month. Joining me to break this home game down. I'm so excited that they're back in Memphis is Nick Angstead. Are you ready for this one? Because it is a lot different than the first game that we broke down. And different than the second one. I mean, there's not been one same Mavs Grizzlies game and the injury report just continues to either pile up and then unpile up. And then now it's back to piled up. And like, I don't know what to make of it. It is, but I guess it is a little similar to the first one that was in Memphis because again, tonight, Kyrie Irving will not be playing for Mm. the Dallas Mavericks. So Grizzlies home games, Grizzlies fans are not going to be able to see Kyrie. They will see Luca. They will not see Kyrie this season. Uh, Josh Green is also out, Max Kleber. And then uh, a sneaky big injury, I think, at least against the Grizzlies, is Grant Williams is out today. Yeah. Um, Grant Williams had 15 points that first game. He had 16 the second game. He kept the Mavs, like, uh, not. I'm not going to say alive, but he kept the Mavs, like, very, like, mm, energetic with the three-pointers that he had. I think he was, like, three for four or four for five in the first half of that second game where the Grizzlies ended up winning. Uh, how big are these injuries? Kyrie, Grant, Max, Josh. Yeah, Grant did that move too the whole game. He was doing he was doing this he was doing this a lot too. Very Grant Williams. <laughs> Kyrie obviously is the biggest one. I mean, you, you yeah. look at what Kyrie brings to this team, and he the connecting point with when Luca sits, he's the uh, is like their extra juice when Luca doesn't necessarily have it, or even when he does, like he keeps the attention off of Luca in some ways. He allows Mavericks to just do a lot of things. His shooting and Honestly, his defense and his rebounding have kind of been underrated. He had a, a quote to us at Media Day uh, when we interviewed him. He's like, I want to be a, I want to be considered a four in the NBA. And like he was joking. But I think that he has a value of trying to do some of the extra things, do the little things and show himself as an unselfish superstar. And so not having Kyrie is definitely a, a big loss. However, the last time that they the last time the Mavs and Grizzlies played, it was Kyrie was in and Luca was out and the Mavs lost. Luca doesn't lose against the Grizzlies. I don't know. We can just start. We can just start there with that. Uh, that's just gonna, end this then. I mean, he, he does it. And so coming out, you're going to say, all right, how can how can the Grizzlies defend him, and how can the Mavericks take advantage of of uh, what Luca can do against the Grizzlies? And I feel like that's that's it. All right. Well, you asked the question. How do the Grizzlies uh, defend Luca? Yeah, there's there's been he's he's seen every kind of coverage, right? Like he's seen every type of strategy that you want to throw. Adam, he's seen the hard doubles. He's seen the soft doubles. He's seen the, you know, we're going to trap you at half court. Well, he's seen the pressure. He's seen single coverage with like a player coming over to help late. You know, like he's seen all the different things that you can, you can do, but the Mavs have to be able to, if they're going to do the hard double thing, if they're going to send two, Luca has to be able to make the right pass. There's been one game this year where the Mavs struggle with that. And it was against the bulls. The bulls have like this really good defense, even though they're not a very good team. Okay, uh, let's talk about Grizzlies offense because Desmond Bain has had 30 points in both games against the Mavs. Uh, He's really good Uh, for the season. He's averaging 46% from the field, a little under 40% from the three-point line, and it just seems like against Dallas, it all kind of comes together. Whereas Jaron had that 30-point game in the loss to Dallas, and then he had, um, I mean, four points, I guess, in the win over (laughs) Dallas. Like. what do you, when you look at Des and Jaron, the two big scorers and like how that scoring and result kind of turned out, what does that say to you? Yeah. It, it says the Mavs struggle guarding guys like Desmond Bain, the guys that can, I, I just, I can, ima- I can imagine thinking back to that last Grizzlies Mavs game, just Desmond Bain driving from one wing into the middle of a court and just like guys trying to chase him down every single time. It just felt like they couldn't keep up with him. It felt like they weren't ready for him. And every single time he, he scored, it felt like every time he touched the ball because he just was, was so good. Uh, Derek Jones Jr., this is going to be his assignment probably, and he's been really good for the Mavericks this year. He's gotten those assignments where he guards the best perimeter player. Uh, but the Mavericks, it's, it's kind of like a team collective thing. You know, the same way you guard Luka, like, to guard some of the best offensive players in the NBA, it's got to be like a team effort. It can't just be on one player to try and, and break them down. And so I feel like that's where Desmond made succeeded a lot. It's like, all right, I'm going to get past – Derek Jones Jr. with this screen or with this cut or, or something. And then the Mavs have to pick it up other than that and rotate the right way and, and get somebody to, to pick him up. Uh, and it just didn't happen last game. I mean, it was just, it was brutal to watch that. On the Jaron Jackson. It's actually really great to watch that on our end. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. It's fair. I forgot where I was. Sorry. I forgot where I was. For a second. <laughs> uh, this is not a home game for me. Yeah. And uh, 
Jaren. But with, with Grant Williams out, that the Jaron Jackson Jr. piece of it is interesting too because Derek Lively is, has been a good defender at the rim, but they've used him more in like defend the paint, be a help defender, not a one-on-one defender of a post scorer. Mm-hmm. And he struggled with Jaron Jackson Jr. defending that first game. I mean, Jaron Jackson would just drive right by him every time. And he struggled with driving bigs, the Giannis's, the Zions, the Sabonis, and, you know, Jaron Jackson Jr. I think he had like three, three fouls on Jaron Jackson Jr. just with his drives to the basket. Uh, and so mm-hmm. that like the first time that they played. So that's something I'm watching for sure. Okay, let's forget drives for now. I want to talk to you about three-pointers because Dallas takes the most threes in the league. The Grizzlies take the six most, so both top 10 in the league in taking those three-pointers. The only difference is the Mavs are, I guess they score the fifth most points in the entire league out of all 30 teams. And they shoot the ninth highest percentage. The Grizzlies shoot the 29th highest percentage from three. Yeesh. Big difference there. Is it like a live or die by the three game tonight? Is that what you expect? This is Dallas Mavericks basketball. It's live or die by the three like every night. It just, it just feels like it is. Two years ago, Jason Kidd, in, uh, I think it was in training camp, said, you know, we want to not live or die by the three. And they did that the entire season last year. So this year he did not say that because I don't think he believes that it can happen, right? Okay. They just do. They live and die by the three. If, if you can hit their threes, they're unstoppable. They have a player like Tim Hardaway Jr., and if Tim Hardaway Jr. hits like three threes, it feels like the Mavs just can't be beat. If and Luka he hits his twenty-one threes, points last time he was here, like Tim Hardaway yeah. Jr. always comes into FedEx Forum and like has himself a night. It depends on if his dad is in the stands or not. If if Tim Hardaway Sr. is in the audience, he's gonna have a big game. If he's not, then it's it's hit or miss. Okay, it's I'm this just very weird. The, thing. the ticket staff people on the phone right now and just make yeah, sure no, to watch him. Tell me if <laughs> tell me if Sr. is gonna be in the audience. He they they had a game in Detroit that Tim Hardaway Sr. was there and he's and Tim Hardaway Jr. scored forty three points and it was like his only forty point game and I was like, what are the odds that Tim Hardaway Sr. would one be in the stands in Detroit and two would like. It would go off that way. It was it's wild. not allowed here in the city of Memphis. <laughs> yeah. So if you're out there, do you see Tim Hardaway Sr.? Uh, maybe try and stop him from entering the, the yeah. building. Please. <laughs> we'll see. So, well, he they, also, so Tim, Tim Hardaway Jr., and I don't want to talk too much more about him, but again, he had that 21 points when he was here in Memphis, um, and then he didn't play in that other game. So that's what we're talking about, where like it's a different Dallas roster every time. It's like different people you have to worry about because um, – in that game that the Grizzlies won, it was Derek, jo- Jun- Derek Jones Jr. who had 16, Grant 16, Kyrie 10. Like it was very evenly split. Whereas that game that they lost, it was like very much like 35, 12, and 12, like Luca, Luca, Luca. And then Luca had his baby, so he didn't play. It's been all over the place. The Grizzlies, the injury report I didn't even get to. Everyone is, it's it's the same as it's been. Derek Rose is in today. Everyone who's been out is still out. John Morant has four more games before he is back. I'm going to end this, Nick, with, because we've already played the Mavs twice, I don't want to do matchups anymore, and I'm going to take the three-pointer away from you're not allowed to answer. So if Dallas does blank tonight, they win the game. If Dallas does, if Dallas Dallas limits transition offense. Ooh, that's a really good one because we want transition buckets. (laughs) <laughs> the Mavs have been really good. I, I haven't looked this up in two days, but if the Mavs are like 10 and 0 when they limit teams to uh, under 15% of their offense in transition, if it's over 15%, they're like, it's like one in eight or something like that. It's wild. Yeah. The, the swing between when the Mavericks allow teams to get out in transition and when they don't get out in transition. So if they can limit those, those buckets, if they can limit fast break points if they can do that and some most of that is just their offense like not making dumb turnovers making sure yeah. they secure rebounds you know, things well they like also that. don't so, turn the ball over ever so that's nice yeah they're one of the leaders in the league and least amount of turnovers which is yeah. wild having a, a player like luca that has the ball so much but yeah and Kyrie. yeah but. Kyrie's been really good at not turning the ball over and and dante exum dante exum has been really good lately he had his i think is close to his career high he had 23 the other night mm-hmm. and uh he's been really good at not turning the ball over as well all right. Well, it is the third battle, third, third of four battles this season uh, with the Mavs. The games are split. So this one is kind of like that tiebreaker for now until January. Nick, thank you so much. Go Grizz. And thanks for the tip on not allowing Tim Hardaway into the stands tonight. <laughs>